Up next on Awesome Toy Reviews, we look at the Roy Rogers and Dick Tracy Bakelite film cameras. Awesome Toy Reviews. While on a trip out of town last year, I stopped in at an antique store and came across these two cameras in a display case that caught my attention. I asked the staff to come open the case so I could take a closer look. I was really taken aback by these novelty items that were in real mint condition. My mind exploded as I had never seen anything like this before. They were in such good condition that at first I thought they might have been vintage recreations. Before I could even think any more about what I held in my hands, I said, So just what is the story on these cameras? Were they legit? Were they designed for practical photography? I soon discovered that the Herbert George Company from Chicago manufactured the Roy Rogers 620 model camera in 1950 and they seemed to specialize in Bakelite novelty type cameras. So why did Herbert George choose Roy Rogers to promote this camera? It's not like the singing cowboy was closely identified with photography. Well, just like today, if you want to move product, you choose the biggest names to sponsor your products. And back in the 1950s, there was no bigger name in entertainment than Roy Rogers, the king of cowboys. Hi, fellas. Roy Rogers! Hey, that's a pretty tricky hat, isn't it? Partners, how would you like to surprise your pals like that? Well, you can with my new Roy Rogers quick shooter hat. Roy Rogers was not the only faceplate to grace this model camera. Davy Crockett, another super popular character from that time period, also graced the camera's front. Herbert George also used the design for the official Cub Scout and Girl Scout cameras. And the company also had faceplates for their own Adventurer, Herco, and Imperial brands. The simple to use 620 film box camera had a fixed focus and took 12 exposures with a snapshot shutter on color or black and white roll film. The image size was two and a quarter inches square. It doesn't take a super sleuth to know how popular Dick Tracy is. Created in 1931 by Chester Gould, he has been catching criminals in newspaper comic pages to this day. He made it big in the comics, on the radio, in movie serials, and was the subject of a major motion picture in 1990. And back in the 50s, every kid wanted a wristwatch radio just like Dick Tracy. The Dick Tracy camera was manufactured by the Seymour Products Company of Chicago in 1947. It employed a body designed in 1938, which was priced at $1.98 that was actually modeled after the widely popular 35mm Argus A, which was the first American 35mm camera introduced in 1936. The company sold a Hopalong Cassidy version in 1940 under the pseudonym of the Galter Products Company. By the time they released the Dick Tracy model, they were selling for just a few pennies less than $5. You could order this Bakelite Beauty, which also came complete with a film developing kit. They bolted the camera, used easy to get 127 film, which could take 16 exposures on a typical 8 exposure roll. The darkroom setup included 14 pieces including developer, fixing solution, trays, 24 sheets of printing paper, and a darkroom light bulb. They also released a black and red face model. Like the Herbert George Company, Seymour also packaged their products to appeal to a different audience. They used the same 127 film camera design to release a Brenda Starr Cub Reporter version aimed at girls. Brenda Starr was to young girls what Dick Tracy was to boys. She was widely popular in the comics, movie serials, and also got a Hollywood big screen adaption starring Brooke Shields. Let's take a look inside to see how the film worked. A new roll of film was placed on one end and then pulled up across the film plane and attached to the empty roll on the other side of the camera. The two halves of the camera are then put back together. The shutter trigger is then depressed to expose the film and then pulled back up to reset the shutter. After each exposure, the large knob is advanced to roll the film to the next frame, ready for exposure. The round window on the back displays each frame number on the back of the film. The Dick Tracy camera could take a long exposure or a regular speed exposure. Just like the 620 film camera, the 127 roll film is pulled across the film plane and attached to the empty roll for advancement. 
Once again, the number of each frame can be seen through the back window. These cameras are made with Bakelite, which was all the rage during the first half of the last century. It was used as an early plastic-like material for creating molded products and it opened a whole new style of design now that manufacturers could make smooth, polished, lightweight products in a variety of diverse shapes. Leo Bakelite, a Belgian-American chemist, invented the Bakelite process in 1907 by mixing phenol with formaldehyde with a filler material like sawdust. Bakelite was initially used as an electrical insulator due to its non-conductive, heat-resistant properties. Items like toys, jewelry, kitchenware, electronic housings for phones and radios, billiard balls, and so on were able to be mass-produced due to a quick, repeatable molding process. Bakelite was at the height of popularity through the Art Deco period, and it's become quite collectible due to the style and design qualities of the period. I have a few other Bakelite cameras in my collection, including this 3D camera, which I received as a birthday gift, which included the original box. But none are as cool as my new Dick Tracy and Roy Rogers cameras. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to see more of our videos.